Praise the Lord. Amen. If, if this thing falls down, it's not my fault. This tripod is very wobbly. Give everybody a moment to get settled in and I'll try not to hit the table. <laughs> Amen. Good to see everybody this evening. Getting ready for some Bible study. Let everybody get a chance to join in with us here. <clears throat> And if you have a moment, you can get your Bibles. I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Good to see Sister Ray, Brother Sister Pruitt, Mother. Hello, Logan and Ashley. Brother Pruitt, God bless you. And everybody ready to join in. Uh, before we do get started, wanted to... Let everybody know we plan on having service Sunday, so 12 o'clock. Uh, hopefully, everybody can kind of join in. If you do feel uncomfortable making it out to service on Sunday, uh, we will be doing Facebook Live. So um, if you do come, then you get to see what I've been doing for the last uh, six to eight weeks. Praise the Lord. And it is Mother's Day, so uh, come and wear your big hats and let's have a good time in the Lord and celebrate our mothers. Praise the Lord. I uh, want to go to the Lord in prayer, so if you have a special and spoken request, why don't you just lift your hand and make it known to the Lord, and uh, we'll go to Him in prayer. Praise the Lord. Forgive my t-shirt. Uh, time got away from me and I hit the button to go before I could get my shirt on, <laughs> my button-up shirt. So please forgive me. Uh, amen. Let's go to the Lord. Let's open a Bible study this evening in prayer. Lord, we thank you uh, for this time that we have to uh get into your word. I pray that you would anoint it, that you would stir our hearts, our minds. Let us learn of you, God, to follow after you. Lord, you see us in this uh, midweek, Lord. I pray that you continue to watch over us and protect us. Lord, you know the, the needs, the special unspoken. I pray for them, Lord, that you would touch them. And Lord, I pray, Lord, as we gather again in service on Sunday, that you would be there, meet with us, Lord. We thank you, God, for bringing us through such a time as this, Lord. And Lord, I pray for the leadership of our country, God, that you would move and that you would touch and anoint. Lord, that I pray also for the leadership of the church, God, that you would move upon them. We thank you, God, for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. We're going to get into the word of the Lord. So I'd like to read for your hearing. Uh, Luke, we're going to be reading uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 15. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 15. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days tempted of the devil... And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will. 
I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from thence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. For the next oh, few moments, few minutes here, I'd like to bring to your attention, it's already written already written. You know, Jesus shows us how to overcome our enemy, and it's through the written word of God. And God already established it from the beginning, and so it's already been written. Have you, uh, have you ever thought of that saying, grass is greener on the other side? Have you ever looked at somebody's yard and thought that their yard looked much better than yours. I remember uh, one time as, as a young 10-year-old, uh, we was living out west and it seemed like the only green vegetation we could get grown was weeds. And so it was my job to, to help get those weeds cut down. But across the fence, the neighbor had this beautiful green grass. And I always thought, yeah, his grass is truly greener than what we got over here because all we have is green weeds and dirt. So sometimes, yeah, the grass can be greener on the other side, but there's a saying that uh, grass looks greener on the other side until you get on to the other side and you find out that they have just as many weeds as you did. Maybe they spray painted their dirt green and made it look greener. Maybe you ever thought that uh, your house wasn't as good as your neighbor's, or maybe the fellow down the street had a better automobile, or maybe his driveway was better. I don't know. You just kind of had that envious uh, look every time you looked around because what you had just didn't seem uh, to be uh, what you wanted or what you, uh, you didn't just, you just didn't care for what it was that you had. It always seemed like something else looks better. I know sometimes when we did way back in the day, I mean, way back in the day when we used to go eat at restaurants, Sister Romine had always order something and it always sometimes looked better than what I had. But there was times that she would get a, a dead dry piece of red meat that didn't look very good at all. And I was glad that I got what I had. So sometimes that didn't work on that. But you ever sat down and thought, man, what they got, this sure does smell a lot better. It sure does look a lot better. Sometimes we think that uh, the job is not, you know, I wish I had a better one. I wish I wish I, uh, I had a better uh, automobile or maybe I wish I wasn't so old or maybe I, I wish I could get older. It just seems like sometimes going through life, we're so uh, uncontented in what we have. We, we're always looking for that one thing that seems to be a little better. There was an experiment that was happening uh, as they began to uh, test these monkeys. And so when a task was completed, both of the monkeys, it was agreed upon that they would give them cucumbers. And so both monkeys completed the task and they was given cucumbers. And they enjoyed them and, and so uh, didn't have a problem at all. And then the next day uh, they was doing some tasks. And so when the task was completed, the one monkey, he got his cucumber and the other got a grape. Well, he threw a fit. He, he started uh, ramming the cage and baring his teeth and just 
threw a little fit, hissy fit. And it all boiled down to that it wasn't that the cucumber wasn't good enough. It was just, that's not what the other one had. And he, he just wasn't satisfied with what he had. Sometimes in our lives, uh, we seem to throw fits when we don't seem to get what we think we deserve or what we need. And so uh, when we get all caught up in this type of, of uh, carnal living, it's easy for the enemy to bring temptations our way. And so we get our eyes off of the promises that have already been given to us, the blessings that God's already blessed us with, and it's easy for him to enter in and just offer up a little, uh, hey, wouldn't you rather have this? You know, sometimes uh, we think we're just missing out, but the promises has always been there. It's always for us. It's in our moment that we, we are self-indulging, that we lose sight of what God has already written into our lives. So let's not fall prey to the different because the different comes from that one that lost the battle. He has no control. He only thinks he has control. And the only way that he... Uh, can have some semblance of control is if he can get your attention off of what God has already blessed us with. Now, temptation comes to every human being. We're all faced with it. It's just a fact of life. It's part of something that none of us can avoid. And as long as we live in the flesh, it will always come our way. We can't outgrow it. We'll never get enough knowledge or wisdom to conquer it most times. We will, we will fall, and, and it is called temptation for a reason. But when we do fall, thanks to the Lord, we have an opportunity to, uh, to rely upon him, and he can bring us out of those situations because he does have all power. We find in our passage of Scripture that Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit of God. And so after his baptism, we see him uh, going his way on the other side of Jordan into the wilderness. Isn't it interesting to know that the enemy never did, the devil never did try to conquer Jesus while he was about the father's business being baptized. You never see the enemy around when there's worship and praise. You know, although he may be looking in on it, he can't touch that. He can't go through that. There's, it's too powerful. He has to wait until the flesh is worn down and fragile to a point. Then he can begin to test us and, and try to bring temptation our way. And I think it's ironic that we find Jesus after his baptism after he has already made the decision, hey, I've got to conquer my flesh. I'm going to do something. I'm going to follow the will of God because the word has already been written and who else would know it better than God himself? I, I need to go and I need to be submissive. I need to bring this flesh under the subjection of the spirit. And so we find Jesus living in the wilderness for 40 days. And so he is fasting and uh, no food, no water. Have you ever tried fasting with no food or water? I've gone five minutes without water and I'm, my lips are already parched. I think I'll take a drink. Excuse me. And so we find that Christ went to show that the word was alive, that it was written. It's a promise that he was given to all humanity. Uh, you know, somewhere in my mind, I really believe that Jesus was going to prove to the adversary that uh, he was a conqueror, that he was coming to take what he had originally given the prince and power of the air. He said, I'm coming back to take it back. You can't have it any longer. And so... What has already been written becomes the standard. Could I uh, let you know that the word of God is already established? 
It's already been presented. It's already been spoken into existence. It's become our standard. It's become our foundation. We can stand upon it because the word of God stands true. And so through the times of our testing, through the times of our proving, through the times of our gaining spiritual strength, we can just rely upon his word. If we stay in the word of the Lord, then we can stand on the promises of God. So what's that entail us? That tells us we keep fasting. We keep praying. We keep reading his word. We make it our daily devotion and we can be an overcomer. We don't have to rely upon our flesh to decide whether or not our grass is green or on this side. No, we just live by the spirit and allow God to direct our steps. Because once we've got it focused, our minds focused, and we're not worried about what's got the best intentions and where I can do this or what, how this could happen, we're relying on the move of the Spirit, and we're relying upon what God can give to us. So we find that Jesus is fasting 40 days, and so the flesh needs to have food. Have you ever done one of those one day, two day fast. It don't take very long to realize that the flesh craves food and it longs to be satisfied. You know, myself longs to be satisfied. I long to in indulge in things that taste good. I, I long to indulge in those things that satisfy what it is that the flesh is desiring. And so the flesh, if it's denied, begins a great battle. And, you know, many times we cringe when we come to that point where we're going to fast. And I know oftentimes we haven't done it this year, uh, but uh, we oftentimes in the beginning of the year will fast uh, media, we'll fast a multitude of different things because we want to deny the flesh. In this world, or today's society, our flesh is indulgent on a great many things. And uh, food is one of them, but uh, far be it, it, it could be a whole lot more that we want to satisfy ourselves with. And so we try to deny, we want to deny ourselves because we want to build up our spirit. And so Jesus went six weeks denying his physical appetite refusing to give in to his fleshly cravings. He had to be ready for the spiritual battle that he was about to embark upon. If the flesh had been in control of what Jesus was doing that day, he would have lost the war. The flesh wasn't strong enough to deal with what Christ was going to have to deal with. Even in the flesh, God knew he had to get his flesh under subjection. We ourselves, we have to get ourselves into a place where we can fight the spiritual warfare. It's, it's, we can't fight it in a carnal state of mind, but we've got to get ourselves holy, acceptable, and pleasing in the sight of God. We've got to deny our flesh that we can be an overcomer. If you're all the time pleasing yourself, if you're all the time enjoying life, I wonder what kind of sacrifice then that you are giving to the Lord. Self-indulgence is not a way of pleasing God. God wants to know if you love him with all your heart, your mind, soul, and strength. Are you getting up early in the morning? Is your prayer life growing are you able to get on in the presence of the Lord? When was the last time you was able to tell the adversary or your flesh that it has been written, I am a conqueror through Christ Jesus, my Lord. It is written, I can pray and have power in my prayer. It is written, I can have victory. Or we could actually say, it is written, I have victory through the blood of the Lamb. Many of us, we just allow the adversary to run us over. We're like the monkey. We're, we're satisfied and just uh, getting mad if, if our flesh isn't indulged anymore. Could I ask us to awaken ourselves and allow our spirits to grow and grow and allow the word of God to minister for us? If we allow God's word 
to go before us, then, then we would be able to live more spiritually for him much easier. It, it, it's, it's good to live in God's economy when God is moving. And there's ways to do that, just simply relying upon his word. Praise the Lord. Yet in the spirit, Christ's spirit, which is God, he was able to overcome. And then while he was uh, able to overcome through the spirit, he was able to recognize exactly what the plan of Satan was. With the spirit of God alive in us, we'll be able to recognize the enemy when he decides to come in like that flood. And so we find that Jesus was tempted by the devil. And so he waited until the wilderness time. Our enemy will always show up in the moment of our weakness. He'll never want to show up when we're mighty in the Holy Ghost, when we're at an altar and we're praying through and God's blessing and, and moving. No, he'll wait till Monday morning when nobody else is around, when you're by yourself and then he'll begin his small attacks. It won't be a full-fledged. It will be something small. Oh, I'll catch that tomorrow. Oh, I'll pick that up uh, the next day. Or I'll just let this pass because I'll, I'll do it another time. And before long, it's been a whole week before we've ever been back into the presence of God. That's when the enemy begins to really throw the temptations in. That's when he begins to work on us. And Jesus didn't wait. He begins right in. And so he begins to walk. And as he's walking, he's hunger, the Bible says. And, and the devil begins to tempt him with, well, the stones that are around, why don't you make them into bread? Why don't you give yourself a break? Why don't you allow yourself to give in and indulge? I remember one time I was on one of those fasts, and it's been a few years ago. And <clears throat> a buddy of mine uh, brought in a whole dozen of Long's Donuts. And I'm like, oh man, I can't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm not able. And I was trying not to say anything. Oh yeah, here. And he's flowing these and they're hot and they're, they're smelling good. And he, he's like, well, just fast another day, just fast tomorrow. And I'm, no, I'm not. I'm going to fast today. And so I got myself out of the vehicle and I let him eat all those donuts and that was a fast. That was, that was true. That was true, genuine fast, denying the flesh. But that's exactly what the devil was doing to Jesus that day. And guess what the Lord said? He knew the word. He said, it's been, it's written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Oh, I believe that through uh, the devil for a loop, you mean being so hungry, you're going to deny uh, just the very essence of living on this earth. You're going to deny yourself water. You're going to deny yourself a substance of food, even though you have the power to change things. And then you threw the word at me. And so he, he said, well, I'll try it another way. You know, sometimes uh, as those stones being turned into bread Jesus was trying to prove and was proving to the adversary, hey, you, you don't have to challenge me. You don't have to challenge me because I know exactly who I am. You see, the tempter was trying to uh, weaken Christ's identity. Are you really the son of God? You think you're really there? You got to realize that Christ was flesh. There was flesh and he was battling flesh but at this moment, he had broken flesh down and he was truly walking in the spirit. He was showing us and giving us a roadmap saying, if you would just rely upon my word and allow my spirit to fight for you, then you'll be able to walk through this wilderness that you call life. You'll be able to pick yourself up in the times of trouble because I'll be there right beside you. I'll love you. I'll guide you. I'll give you the words you need to eat. You don't always are going to be able to rely upon uh, the, the uh, essentials of flesh. I want you to learn to rely upon the spirit that I 
want you to rely upon. I want you to walk by what I want to give you and bestow upon you to bless you with. So Satan was trying to show Christ the pride of life. Are, are you going to weaken? Are you going to allow a, a little weakening of the flesh? And Jesus was denying him the whole, the whole, all the way through. No, because I'm going to stand upon the word. I'm going to rely upon the word of God. You know, satisfying the physical hunger, uh, it's, uh, sometimes in that fasting, we're making ourselves stronger in the spirit. We're more sensitive. Even though our flesh is weakened, our spirit is stronger. And at some, at some point, we will break the fast. And it's at that moment of time where it's, we're in that moment of breaking that fast, coming from the spirit to the flesh, that's when the adversary begins to attack us. And you know, we fall prey. We, we fall prey to his devices, but then that's when the word of God stands in firm and, and true. Get thee behind me, Satan. I don't have to hear you. I don't have to listen to you. You're a liar and a father of them. Leave. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Stand on God's word. It's true. Hallelujah. It's been written. It's already written. You're a winner and it's already been written down. It's not the temptation before us that's going to destroy us, but it's how we respond to those temptations that seem to fly at us. You ever notice that? It seems like they come in in, in waves and they seem to overwhelm us. But I'm so thankful that God knows exactly where we're at and we can hear the word of truth. He'll speak to us through many messengers. He'll give us a word of faith when we think not. And I'm thankful for that. His word has already been established. It's already been written. The word will never uh, fail. And Jesus begins to tell Satan, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God that proceedeth out of his mouth. We can live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. When the word is used, we are allowing God to enter into our battle plan. We, it's not our fight. We've relied upon him. God, I'm standing upon your, your word. I'm standing upon your promises. And with God involved in our situation, we can always, we'll always be victors. Now, as, as we begin to move from the bread and, and the stones of bread, the devil, the scripture begins to tell us the devil begins to take Jesus up to the pinnacle of the temple. And so in times of temptation, the flesh can sometimes do some questionable or strange things. And so we can embrace what God is doing or we can challenge what God is doing. Simply Jesus wanted to see, or, or the devil wanted to see if Jesus would jump. He wanted to see if he had him to the point that he was weak enough to fall to his devices, to see if God would really send his angels, to see if Jesus really knew God would send his angels. He was just trying anything to get him to trip up. Satan, uh, at this time in the wilderness, was tempting Jesus to challenge the deity that lied within the flesh. Challenge that spirit. Can you challenge it? Will you challenge it? And so he begins to test God. And in our wilderness and moments of our temptation, it becomes easy for us to question God's plan. Does he really care for me? Does he really love me? Uh, our minds begin to run rampant with thoughts of just simply survival. Am I going to survive this? Am I going to make it through this? Will God save me? If I fall, and it's during these times of disillusionment and these times of, that we subject ourselves uh, to deception, we allow the adversary to paint a picture that uh, may, may not really look, but in our mind frame, it looks so different. In our time of trouble, it can look so different. And so as we begin to contemplate and make decisions Possibly we're making decisions at the wrong moment. 
You know, that's why it's uh, given to us to be patient and wait upon the Lord. Don't make those decisions in those times of temperaments that are coming against you, in those bad attitudes, in those times of bitterness. Don't, don't make a, a spiritual decision. Wait and allow God to establish himself. Rely upon the presence of God. Wait upon the word of God because it's been written into your life already. Allow him to move. You know, when our mind begins to clear and when the spirit begins to move, then we can begin to make those types of decisions. Why? Because now we're looking at it in a different realm. We're not looking at it at a delusional type of state where the enemy can come in and that flooding of the enemy of his temptations can overcome us. Because now we're allowing the word of God to minister. So Jesus was being tempted to, uh, to prove again to Satan that he is not going to tempt the Lord his God. You, you can't tempt. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. I'm going to wait upon the Lord. Will he save me? I know I'm going to put my trust and my faith in him. I'm not going to make decisions right now, Satan, because I'm going to get into a prayer meeting and I'm going to, I'm going to rely upon the already written word, the already promised word of God. And then I'm going to allow him to make that decision for me. After he couldn't get Jesus to fall into the arms of angels and tempt the Lord God, He's, he began to bring him to a place of temptation in the flesh, uh, moving from the flesh into more of a spiritual realm. Jesus, or God, has always desired the worship of his creation. And so if you notice the wording of Luke, Satan begins to give Jesus words that sounded, I, I thought it was ironic in Luke uh, 4, in verse six, he says, and the devil said unto him, all this power I'm going to give you because it's been given unto me and I'm going to allow you to have all their glory. I'll allow you to have all the honor. I'll allow you to have all the praise. You see, the adversary or Satan had already been in the realms of heaven. He knew how God enjoyed the worship of those that would surround his throne. In fact, Lucifer, the, the, the falling angel, was the pinnacle of worship and praise before God's throne. So he knew exactly what God desired and wanted. And so in his last ploy, in his last trying to get the flesh of God to fall, because if he could get the flesh of God to fall to temptation, then we have a sinful Christ. And then that changes everything. But I, I find it ironic that he would try to turn the, the, the tide around on God himself and try to say, you've allowed this to be mine and I'll just allow you to have it back if you just give me all that I wanted in the beginning, God, worship. If you would just give me all the praise, then you can have all of this. Now, it, it sounds in our carnal mind like, well, the battle could have been won that way, God. But God wanted the adversary to understand that no matter the trials and the test and the harshness of the flesh that he was living in, there was always going to be a means of escape for those that would rely upon the blood and the mercy of Christ. He was a conquering savior. He is the mighty God. And there'll be no worship other than unto God. And that's exactly what Jesus begins to tell Satan. He says, it's written, get thee hence, Satan. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Hallelujah. The enemy thought at the weakest point that Christ was in, that he would be willing to give away the worship and praise. But that wasn't the case. Because why? The word was already spoken. The word was already written. 
The foundation had already been laid. Christ was at that foundation. He's the very beginning. He is the cornerstone. He is the overcomer. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting father. You know, Satan that day left beaten. And the Bible would tell us only for a season. I believe that our temptations, uh, each demon, each spiritual warfare that we go through with the evil one, it's personal to them. It's personal to the devil because he realizes that if he can steal your praise, if he can torment you, if he can ridicule you, and you say, but me, me personally? Yes, you personally. Christ died for every one of us. Every seven billion souls that are upon the face of the earth, this hour, right now, God robed himself in the flesh, died upon a cross for that very soul. And each one, when they fall to that temptation, grieves the Lord. He wants that soul to rely upon him to bring them out of that air of temptation. Why? Because then that's the adversary's way of saying, see God, I got this one. I got that. You couldn't but the Lord saying, no, I died for the whole world. That's why that when we do fall, we have an advocate with the father, the high priest, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. His blood was spread for us. It was shed for us, excuse me. And so we become overcomers by the, 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 the very word of God. Don't underestimate the value of, of the word of God in your life. Don't underestimate uh, reading each passage each day. It means something. It allows the spirit man inside of you to be in contact with the, with the, the Lord. It, it, it's an, an encouraging. It's, it's where our wellspring of hope is at. It's where our joy in the morning is. It's where our life spring is and it joins us with the Lord. So during the times of temptation, the word of God could be our source, will be our source of that supernatural strength that we need. In fact, Paul would write it, our weapons are not carnal, but are mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. David understood it best he, as he would begin to say, I want to hide in your word. I'm going to hide your word in my heart that I won't sin against you. And then he would also realize that the word was a lamp unto his feet and a light unto his pathway. In fact, it was his greatest battle as he stood that day against Goliath that he would begin to declare the power in the name of the Lord of hosts and would begin to stand upon that already written word of God. It's already established, Goliath, I am a victor. You've come against the Lord of hosts. We're gonna stand upon his word. We're gonna stand upon his promises. So to win the greatest battle, he declared that there is power in the name of the Lord of hosts. I'm going to stand upon his word that's already been declared. And knowing the word, victory was his. Even, even in his harshest times, his falling into temptation, David relied upon the word of God to bring him out. We can do the same. Let's stand upon the word of God. Let's study it. Let's know it. Let's put it in our hearts and minds. Let's uh, allow it to be that victorious uh, cry that we can have each and every morning. Even in the midst of our wilderness, wilderness experiences, we can still have victory. We can still rely upon the already written word of God. We're gonna say a prayer here in dismissal. I pray that this has been an upliftment and an encouragement for you. We can follow the life of Christ because that's exactly what he is. He is, he is the leader. He's, he, he lived that life that we could follow him and adapt it to our lives. Will we fall? Yeah, we'll fall. 
but we can always arise. Why? Because he's a risen savior. He's there to pick us up when we are down and he cares and loves for each and every one of us. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your precious spirit and your anointed word. Lord, I pray that these words would be a lamp to those, would be a light unto their path. Lord, that you would move upon your word as it goes forth. And to whomever would hear uh, on Facebook Live now or this recording, I pray that your spirit would minister and direct them unto your truth, unto your glory, unto who you are, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. God go with you. I cannot wait till we're able to meet together uh, Sunday, 12 o'clock. See you at church. God bless you.